Oh, where's the game? One second. Uh, OBS? Oh, there it is. One second. So, we're back. We, I think, just got enough money to actually pay Alice. So let's, uh, let's do it. Hmm. Interesting. Apparently two hotspots followed me yesterday when I wasn't even streaming. Uh, okay, we still have the pupper following us. Clock tabs. Wait. Oh, we need to claim the money, yeah. We did the job, we should have enough money. I just need to go claim it. Um, let's try talking to people again. Igor, hey, will you talk to us more? Maybe she will. Okay. Are you ready? Oh, hell yeah! I'm not gonna lie. I haven't been looking forward to this. But yeah, it's time. Jack, look. I'm about to tell you some things about myself that might change your opinion of me. It's entirely possible you're going to hate me based on what's coming up next. I've accepted that, and if that's what happens, I sincerely believe that I deserve it. One second, let me move around my windows a little bit. Oh, you don't have game audio. How embarrassing. I mean, it's just music, but... Tell me, are you sure you want to keep pushing forward with this? Um, yeah, I'll listen. Thanks, Jack. Thanks for being a friend. So when we left off last time, I had just moved from the streets of Tubingen to the warm, inviting confines of uh, Fierce Stella. Marta and I were happy there for a while, and Harrow embraced me as a long-lost daughter. I should probably take a moment to talk about the Harrow. Er, to talk about Harrow. He's going to be an important figure in this story. I don't know what age, uh, what his age was. He seemed old enough to be paternal. They're young enough to hang with the kids uh, on something like a peer level. Best guess? I'd say he was in his mid-twenties. He was handsome and well-built, with a neatly trimmed beard and thick brown hair. But there was something else about him, something uncanny. Harrow had this charisma, this raw, magnetic attraction that just made people latch onto him. I saw it over and over. All it took was a few words and a pat on the shoulder, and Harrow would have, would have a new convert. The other kids at the farm followed him around like lost puppies. As much as I loved Marta, and as much as I thought she loved me, we forgot all about one another when Harrow was around. All we wanted was to be close to him, 
to be part of his inner circle. And soon enough, we were. For girls 17, it was all terribly exciting. Harrow had these rules of living that he would teach us, rules about self-determination and the importance of disobedience. He claimed to have taught classes at the University of Berlin, which he painted as a mix between an earthly paradise and an anarchist playground. He told us how Fustella would be the focal point of a new movement for the children of the fatherland. He told us that we were special. We ate it up, of course. We were kids. For those of us in the inner sanctum, Harrow would share even more. He had power the likes of which I had never seen. Not my father's drunken fists or my own childish experiments, but genuine, incredible power. He said that it came from the horned god, an ancient deity that he venerated. He knew about my Latin abilities right away, and he offered to teach me. Naturally, I accepted. Um, I say latent. Is it latent? I usually hear people say latent, so sorry if I mispronounced mispronounced that. Um, yeah, this does sound like a cult. You're not wrong there, but it gets a whole lot worse than that, as you'll soon see. Hang with me, Jack. Rough waters ahead. So I became Harrow's apprentice. He taught me to channel magic and summon spirits. He taught me rituals and pagan traditions, Machiavellian philosophy and Nietzschean ethics. Above all, he taught me to connect with his horned god, and through it I learned power and arrogance, and it was all downhill from there. For the next few years, I lived at Fierstella as Harrow's enforcer and right-hand girl. I was also his sometimes wife and concubine. That was a distinction that I shared with all the girls in the commune, including my beloved Marta. I came to learn that she'd been his uh, long before she met me, but by that point, I didn't care. I'd embraced the rules of living. I was Harrow's creature through and through. I didn't ask questions, I walked the path in front of me. Mm. Other fun facts about those years, I learned cruelty. I had power now, and my new idol encouraged me to use it. Harrow did the same. Any children who didn't pull their weight were subjected to my tender mercies, and I was anything but tender. I took what I wanted rather than asking for it. I liked it. It was fun. I also came to learn that Harrow's horned god was not the Eichenfurst, worshipped by throwback cults across Germany. It was certainly a god with horns, but it came from an altogether different tradition. Care to hazard a guess? Really? So he's like a literal Satanist? Uh, sure. The devil? in the magically active community we, we refer to as the adversary but yeah same being more or less lol so my idol the ancient deity that was feeding me and my power was the antithesis of everything that is right and good and you know what i didn't care in our time together Harrow and i committed more atrocities than i could count at this point i was on to all of his tricks I knew that Fierstella was nothing more than a honey trap, carefully designed to lure local children into my master's clutches. I knew that the kids who seemed resistant to Harrow's brainwashing techniques wound up fertilizing the garden. I knew that Harrow's entire manifesto was bullshit. I knew that through it all, Harrow and the adversary were laughing, because I was laughing right there beside them. I don't want to pin the blame for my decisions on anyone but me. That said, I would like to posit that my father's connection to the KZ might have helped play into my willingness to serve the adversary. In my warped, indoctrinated little brain, I equated the church with evil, so the opposite of that, I figured, 
had to be, well, if not good, at least not totally bad. But I was kidding myself, of course. My new deity was the very definition of bad, so every hit made me bad. End of story. This is tough because, like, yeah, like, from someone's own point of view, of course the, the choices they make make some level of sense. Like, that first option, I can't excuse the choice you made, but I can understand why you made them. Like, you could probably apply that to literally anyone that has done any heinous atrocity ever. Like even, I don't know, the Nazis. Like it's not like they just were born evil. Like that was just a prevailing cultural thing in in Central Europe. So, I don't, hmm, hmm. Go ahead, make your excuses. We all make our choices in life. When you chose to hurt innocent kids, my sympathy for you went out. Yeah, kind of. Um, uh, like, sure, I can understand why you made them. But also, like, mm, you tortured children, and we're okay with, like, them being killed and fertilizing gardens? Oof. What would I do if, like, a friend of mine opened up to me with, like, a weird story like this? I don't know. I think I'd still be their friend. I think I'd try and be diplomatic. Assuming they aren't still doing this stuff. But jeez. Anyone who picks this last option is, I think, a complete idiot. It's big of you, Jack. I genuinely mean that. Anyway, one day, Harrow invited me on a field trip to Stuttgart. Over the years I was at Fierstella, the commune had easily doubled in size. It was thriving, all thanks to the efforts of Marta and the girls like her. Hera would send the girls out to neighboring cities to lure in the street kids that nobody would miss. He targeted children because they were easy to indoctrinate and because nothing makes the adversary happier than the corruption of the innocent. As we drove out to pick up the new recruits, I was already planning ahead. It was a foregone conclusion that I would pay my father a visit. The irony of a group of KZ getting immolated by a genuine servant of the actual devil tickled me to no end. So when Harrow stopped me to fill up on diesel, I hopped out of the van and headed out on foot to my parents' place. Harrow wasn't overly concerned about my absence. I had long since reached the point where I could assert my autonomy. And he knew I'd be back. I wound up at my folks' house sometime around noon. I could hear the adversary whispering in my ear, telling me what to do. I'd long since learned to listen to its voice. It always rewarded me with extra power when I did its bidding. It told me to knock, so I did. That's such a side, like... I guess it is kind of weird existing in, I guess, a universe where you can literally actually have voices talking to you in your head and giving you power and shit like that. Like, oh, if some if someone was actually giving me superpowers. That could probably easily be, like, a corrupting force. Superpowers would be pretty rad. Um, hmm. 
So maybe maybe it's not just Hero who's being manipulated, but like I guess the devil itself. Jesus, how freaking weird. As the door opened, I could feel a torrent of flames welling up in the astral plane all around me. It told me to channel them into the doorway, into my father. So I did. But of course, the person who opened the door wasn't my father. It was my mother. As I watched her flesh blacken and melt, as I heard her scream, and, and I broke into hysterics, I heard the adversary laugh. At that moment, I realized it was laughing at me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thanks. We're almost to the end now. Thanks for sticking with me. It was like a lever had been pulled. All at once, the bubble popped. I wasn't a powerful servant of the adversary. I was not Harrow's number one girl. I was a ridiculous little fool who'd willingly tied her soul to the worst thing in existence. Realizing all of this was one thing. Oh, realizing all of this was one thing. Actually fixing it was something else entirely. I knew that I had to get away from Harrow. That was the first thing to do. So I bit my lip and did my best to ignore the happy babble of the new recruits on the trip back to Fear Stella. And I managed to get through the ride without screaming. Once we were back at the commune, I broke into Harrow's safe, stole all of the commune's resources, and ran. I don't know when Harrow realized what I'd done, or whether he even cared. All I know is that nobody came after me, so I kept running and running until I got to Berlin. Getting past the wall was fairly simple. You know how easy it is to obtain falsified papers. The biggest obstacle that I faced during my flight was the adversary itself. I could run from Harrow, but how do you run from something that's tied to your own soul? Oh god, you got, you got real cheap cyberware. I walked into the office of the first street dock I could find, pointed to all of the biggest bulkiest pieces of cyberware he had on display and told him to put them into me. He tried to upsell me on better merchandise, arguing that I was asking uh, that what I was asking for was old and inefficient, better suited to be installed in a museum than a body. He told me I'd be shredding my essence and that once it was gone, I'd never be able to get it back. I stuck to my guns. After all, Shredding my essence was the whole point. It's all for now, Jack. You've heard the tale. You know why I am the way I am. You know the things I've done, and how much I have to atone for. If you still want my company, fine. If I've lost your friendship, I understand that too. But for now, I need to be alone. Oh... Well, I do firmly believe that people can change, and obviously there has been some change. She's helping me save the world from Firewing right now, so we're, we're good, Glory. Uh, I mean, I can't excuse any of the horrible shit you did in the past, but but we're good. Oh. pick of a rain thin a rail thin orc with jet black hair his name is Yuli Kozlov but he's better known by his handle the engineer he's a mercenary ex-spetsnaz one of the best in the field I ran up against him in my KSK days um tell me more his specialties are social engineering and wet work. In practice, he spends most of his time paving the way for organized crime syndicates to seize new territory. He 
sets up bribes, takes out key members of the opposition, and forges alliances with existing street gangs. All the groundwork that Syndicate needs. He's extremely bad news, Jack, and my contact spotted him in Shat Nest. Um. Okay, I guess that is close to the KB. Exactly. I've seen what the engineer can do up close. My KSK unit tracked him down a few years ago. I had him in the sights of my rifle, but I was ordered to hold fire. We couldn't afford to give away our position. To this day, I regret obeying that order. I saw what happened to the town he was softening up after the syndicate moved in. Jack, I gotta stop him before it's too late. What happened to that town? It can't be allowed to happen in Shot Nest, too. Um, the safest bet would be a Russian syndicate, but there's no telling. This client list is longer than you'd expect. Well, I know for a fact he's worked for mafia groups operating inside and outside Russia. He put in a lot of time with the Lubachevsky syndicate. He's taking contracts with the tribes as well. My contacts tell me he's even done a few jobs for Tomanus. So what do we do? Well, we stop him. Or rather, I stop him. I can't ask you to put off our mission for this, but the engineer has to be stopped, so I'm going to have to disappear for a run or two. I know how important it is we resolve the firewing situation. I get it, but I just can't sit back and let this happen. I won't. Yeah, I'll go. Hmm. Well, all right, fearless leader, you're right. I could use the help, but the others, they can't know about this. This is going to have to be a quiet job, two people max. You sure you're prepared for this? If you can't hold off on your end, I'll be better off on my own. Yeah, we have to pay Alice uh, 50,000 million. That's what we've been working towards for the past, like, three weeks, Ace. We gotta pay Alice for the deets. We're going down the rabbit hole. Uh, but apparently first we're going to do Iger's side mission, so... Um, so maybe I was a little bit hasty putting paying Alice. Hopefully we will pay Alice. We have all the money to pay her. Yes, we have the money. I just have to go claim it from my computer. Yeah, yeah, I know you are. Grab your things and meet me at Der Weinkeller. I've got a contact who's going to join us there. And he can help us figure out our next step. Oh, jeez. So, maybe we'll do Iger's quest first, and then we pay Alice. How poopy. Ah, oh, jeez. Everyone wants to talk to me now. They all have new dialogue. Yeah, back when we took on Humanus, you said you fought in the Night of Rage. I'd like to hear more about that. Alright, boss, we can talk about it. Sorry I mentioned that Berlin's punks and anarchists joined forces to fight off the racists, right? After a long, bloody fight, we beat them. What I didn't mention is how I figured into all of this. I'm an anarchist at heart. Always have been. But at the time, I fit squarely into the punk camp. I was 32 at the time. Messerkopf. I was touring. Not as much as we did when we were kids, but we had a following. I guess I was sort of an elder statesman for the scene. When we rallied to fight the racists, my followers came in along for the ride. A bunch of young kids, all full of piss and vinegar and the in immortality of youth. I was full of that good old dragon slayer spirit, pissed off and itching for a fight. So I led those kids into the fray. They waded into the riot right alongside me, yelling and screaming with their fists in the air. I don't remember a whole lot of the fight itself, boss. 
but I do remember the aftermath. A lot of the kids that followed me had grown up listening to my music. They had all of my attitude, Jack, but none of them had my magic. And youthful enthusiasm is no defense against a knife or handgun. I left the punk scene for all the reasons I told you, boss. But there was a bigger reason, and I saw it in those kids' broken bodies. This road that I'm on, it leads to the grave. I've got the power to make it a leisurely trip, but make no mistake, that is where I'm headed. Those kids tried to follow in my footsteps, and they wound up sprinting ahead of me instead. Better for me to stay out of the public eye and stick to the shadows. My stint as a role model was ill-advised. Hmm. Have you put any thought into what I said earlier? What did I say earlier? I have no idea. I guess I told him not to kill himself, or to find... Some other dragon to slay? I don't know. Yeah, boss, I have. It's an interesting idea, but there are risks. I'm thinking this might not be the best of times to approach him about it. He's a source of my magic, remember? If our discussion had turned into an argument, he could take all that magic back in a heartbeat. And then where would we be? Um, hmm. So we're like goading him into standing up to the Dragon Slayer. Alright. I can risk him losing his magic. You got a point there, boss. He wouldn't want me to back down uh, ever. Not even from him. Okay, so I'm going to do this. I'll ask the Dragon Slayer about shifting priorities, I guess you'd say taking on some deserving organization and calling off the hunt for something more impressive than the Firewing. Of course, a fight like that would never really end. I'm never going to bring down a corp or a poly club all on my lonesome. But maybe that's not a bad thing. They take a lot of the guesswork out of life. I don't know, boss. If you have any thoughts about this, I'd love to hear them. Hmm. Um, yeah, I guess. Why Why go after a specific org when you can just be like a general defender of the flux state? Interesting. That's a different approach, but I like it. Hang on a second. I'll ask. Yeah. Yeah, I think he'd like this plan just fine. That was it? That's all it took. The Dragon Slayer doesn't mince words, boss. If he didn't like the plan, he'd have told me. Well, boss, I've got myself a plan and a new target to boot. That's assuming, of course, any of us make it through our current predicament alive. Yeah, reach out to the punk community, Diedrich. Be a role model. Yeah, boss, I was thinking uh, the same thing. Maybe I could give back a bit and fix some of the damage I caused in my misspent youth. After we're finished dealing with the crisis in front of us, that is. It's a good thought, anyway. I'll keep it in mind. Uh, yeah, any thoughts on Alex? Nothing new. He's a Justin. Sweet. I'm going to change my thing to doing... Doing Iger's side job. Since clearly, we're doing that before we are paying Alice. Oh, yeah, did you find Emily Blitz? Yeah, well, sort of. It's mostly speculation, truth be told. I'll get on with it. Well, after our talk, I went wading into the last technology matrix hubs I could find. Nothing too deep, but don't worry. I didn't want to stop any alarm bells. But I had a hunch if I poked around long enough, I'd find something that might lead me to Emily. And sure enough, I did. 
a message from the genuine article herself. She messaged you. Yeah, sure enough, she sent me a note. Want to hear what it said? I'll tell you, the note said, and I quote, Lay off, Blitz, I told you to leave me alone. You've shown admiral self-control over the past year. Please don't give up on it now. I'll be back when I can, if I can. Until then, keep away from me, for both of our sakes. So I found her, and she wants nothing to do with me again. No explanations, no apologies, just a verbal pat on the head. I've shown admiral so admirable self-control, really? She makes it sound like I'm a toddler or something. I mean, you kind of are, Blitz. Hell no, I wasn't going to stand for that. Where does she get off stealing from me and then acting like it was my fault? I tried to trace the message, like any good Decker would. Um, tried? She's good, Jack. Better than I ever thought she was. I couldn't trace the damn thing. I could keep digging, though. I mean, if she noticed me doing it before, I must have been close. Now, before you say anything, I was more discreet this time. I can be subtle if I have to. Nobody noticed what I was doing, and I did find another clue. <laughs> I found a connection between Emily and Seder crew. Hmm. So, do you think she works for SK, then? That she stole the encrypted data from you to give it to them? Well, maybe. I don't know. It's real confusing, man. I was also able to track down some message fragments connecting her to the shock, shock, shock Wellen Rider. So maybe she was a Seder Croup mole, and she got close to me so she could, I don't know, she could profit from my decking expertise? Maybe she had told me not to steal that data, uh, she was using reverse psychology. That's gotta be it. She must have wanted me to take it. But then again, maybe she's with the Shock Wellen Rider, and she's screwing over both the Azis and SK. If that's the case, then maybe she was with me because she genuinely wanted to be. In either case, I should make an effort to find her. I mean, she's playing a dangerous game, whether she's with uh, SK or the Shock Wellen Rider. Maybe she's got herself in too deep. She might need help. I mean, why else would you send me such a cryptic message? Uh, yeah, very cryptic message. Please stay away. Uh, my guess is she's not the one who probably wrote the message. Maybe she was... I don't know. Maybe she's been kidnapped for the last year or something, and that's the big company or whatever that grabbed her sending that note. I don't know. Hey, you should go after her. Yeah, you're right, man. You're absolutely right. Besides, it's not like she can send me a distress call. Her comms are probably being monitored. I'll bet she spent the whole past year waiting for me to come riding to the rescue. Get set, Chief. You're about to witness an event. When my gung-ho personality and my legendary skills come together, the whole world stops and takes notice. Shit. Because I can't deck, I can't help? You won't have to wait long, boss. I know just the place to hit. That same ass technology data node I stole information from in the first place. I already know that I can get past the security. And my gut tells me I'll find Emily there. Thanks for the encouragement, Chief. I knew that this was the right thing to do, of course. But you've helped me quiet any lingering doubts I might have had. And now if you'll excuse me, I've got a damsel in distress to rescue. Well, hmm. Hmm. Hope that goes uh, okay for you, man. Meet Iger's contact. So let's save. We'll go look at our uh, computer first. And hopefully we can just go ahead and claim that money without, like, triggering uh, the main main quest or anything. I still want to do Iger's side job first. So 
so we can claim payment for the sabotage run. Uh, but what pending jobs do we have? We do have this job that we haven't done. This seemed a little bit morally gray, so I don't think that we'll do this one. Uh, unless we spin this as, yeah, trying to stop a corporate war and preventing more lives from being lost in the long run, I don't know. I guess that these two messages are here literally just to give, like, an excuse for a not horrible evil person doing this mission. It's only even 15k though, we don't need that. We don't need it. Um, oh, uh, do I have new messages? No. No, I don't want to look at jobs though. BBS. Yeah, let's claim the money. Okay, so Frau Mueller has fled the country. Oh no, only 18k went to the Alice Fund? Oh, maybe we don't have enough money then. Do we have to do the stupid pharma job? How much money is in the Alice Fund? Oh! Okay, so we do have the money. I just can't transfer it to... Sweet, yeah, we have over the map. Awesome, we do have enough. So I just have to get Polly's uh, permission to transfer it. Do that later. Okay, I'll do Iger's stuff first. Wait, can't buy S-Class drones yet. No, how do I get S-Class drones? doing on my consumables. I should go to the stash real quick. Damn it. Is it up here? Yeah. Okay, see, good thing. I need to take this, the Mono kit, and the uh, med kit. Sweet. Now we can go. Whew. Um, where is Iger's contact? Wait, I don't have a, a quest marker for it. Um, hmm. Okay, let's talk to Iger again. Oh, 
Iger's gone. Okay. Uh, she's probably waiting for me somewhere. Maybe I'll just go into the U-Bahn and hopefully she's down there. In in Rain World, yeah, you can you can tame the lizards, you can befriend them. Hmm. Like, I don't want to spoil things, but how would you? I think in reality you would befriend a wild animal. You do it the same way you would in, in reality. That's one way to do it, yeah. I will admit that I usually play on Monk, and you need, it's a little bit easier on Monk to befriend them. Uh, but on Monk you don't get like, the cool lore, and you also don't, uh, don't, don't do as much spear damage, so it's harder to kill them. Where the hell did Iger want us to go? If you make yourself look like something that they are scared of, they'll also um, run away from you. Which can be helpful. I have no idea where Iger wants us to go. In the cafe, maybe? No. It's gotta be inside one of the buildings, I guess. I don't see any markers on in the city map. Just look this up. Iger's contact. Where? Uh, no, not Rogers. Iger's. Silly Google autocorrecting Iger to Roger. I forgot, so we meet the contact at the bar up here. I actually forgot this place even existed because I only walked into it one time. And there is a marker there. Okay. Heard her. strike have any dialogue with us? That's new. Hello. 
Is this all old dialogue, maybe? Is hiding. This dwarf has a distinctly Eurasian appearance. He peers up at Iger through almond-shaped eyes. The rest of his broad face is dominated by strong Slavic features. He nods to himself and puts down his mug of soy calf. On the edge of the table, a plate of day-old pie cools in a haze of cigarette smoke. Boy, I got been a long time. Keeping busy? Yeah, you could say that. Jack, this is Bannock. He's a friend. Don't know if I'd go that far. Nothing personal, if you understand. But if I were to start keeping friends, I might have to call you one. But in my experience, friendship and obligation go hand in hand. A solitary life is cleaner. <laughs> Professional acquaintance, then. Well, that's better. Down to business, shall we? Let's. We need intel on the engineer. Where he's been staying, who he's working for, and how long he's been in shot and nest. Whatever you've got, we want it. Well, I've had worse, and of course, I'll give you what I can, but I don't know much. I can point you in the right direction, that's all. Just tell us what you can, we'll handle the heavy lifting. A paper map. Well, Alright, what you're looking at is the northwest quadrant of the Shot Nest. This is gang territory, all of it. These days, the whole Kiz is being held by Rambok. Uh, we can handle Rambok. Wouldn't be too sure if I were, uh, about that if I were you. The guy that filled the power vacuum when the last leader bit it is a real piece of work. But hey, maybe you're right. I hope so, for your sake. This warehouse, right here, it's Rambok HQ. And that's where the engineer's staying. Hmm. Well, that's just wonderful. If he's staying, he must be arranging some sort of deal with them. That'd be a safe bet. And they haven't pulled their guns on him yet, so it's fair to assume that negotiations are going well. I'm sure I don't have to tell you this, but the last thing we need is an alliance between some foreign syndicate and Rambach. No good could come of that. Now, I can't tell you who the engineer is working for. You'll have to ask him about that yourself. But what I can do is make it easier for you to have a sit down with him. A bag. Don't open that in here. There are people in this room who, who would kill you for what's in this bag. What you're going to find in there is a gadget about the size of a water pistol. It has a rubberized grip and a hair trigger. It's good for one shot. It's a, is it a stun gun? No, it probably is just a water pistol. Oh. Well, not not really. For your purposes, you might as well think of it as one, though. The object in question is a cyberware deactivator. I had it shipped here at great personal expense from a supermax prison in UCAS. The warden owed me a favor. Hmm, well that's nice, Bannock. This should make it easy. Not easy, but possible. I wouldn't be giving it to you if the job couldn't be done. Uh, if the job could be done without it, the engineer is rocking a Delta grade move by wire system. Unless you can shut it down, there's no way in hell you're gonna catch him. All right. Hmm. And if we do shut it down, he'll be forced into a state of permanent seizure. Permanent. Only until he gets the thing up and running again. Deactivated isn't the same as broken. Until then, his life will be a living hell, but I can think worse than to use it as a bargaining chip. Remember, you need to know who he works for. The more you can take him out of his comfort zone, the better. Uh, yeah, let's go hunting. Egg. Oh, so... Shit. Fuck. 
fine. I guess it takes up my inventory. Cool, let's go to Shot Nest. How do I get out? Okay. Let's go. Just I and I. Uh, so yeah, obviously we're taking Iger. What is this? Ugh. Okay, let's go. Shotness, the key is next door to the KB. And an object lesson in anarchy gone wrong. Violent gangs rule the streets here, trading territory to the roar of gunfire. The streets are a war zone. As dangerous as Shot Nest already is, it could be worse. The gangs are vicious but disorganized. They pose little risk to their neighbors. With little more than a makeshift barricade and a few volunteers, the KB has successfully insulated itself from the chaos of its neighboring keys. The engineer could change all of that. He has to be stopped, and the F-State as a whole needs to be alerted to what his clients are trying to do. It's up to you and Iger to make sure that happens. Uh, Alright, we, we good? Let's go. Let's go time! Uh, yeah, let's use our karma. We have much karma. I enjoy a good drone combat. Um, da, 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 da. Who doesn't enjoy a good drone combat? As you near the edge of the KB, the familiar piss and asphalt stench of shot nest crawls into your nostrils and sticks in the back of your throat. The dilapidated husks of burnt out buildings loom above you, giving the air uh, the place an air of menace. Funny thing is, a syndicate presence might actually help shot nest, in the short term at least. They clean up the streets, if nothing else. <laughs> Not for a second. A syndicate, any syndicate in Shot and Ness would be a disaster for the KB. Let the people on the other side of the gate deal with their own problems. I don't allow my home to be endangered for their sake. Okay. Well, that's awfully selfish of you. That's the way we're supposed to go. Let's check down here, see if there's anything we can find. Aha! Cardboard box! Wait, that's a really big cardboard box. Oh, a homeless person sleeps in it. Let's search it. No, I don't need some homeless person's cred stick. Why 
would you even give me that option, game? Let's just go down this alley. Who's this? as well. I'm sure this is. Oh, a lady. Yeah, we'll talk to the lady, but let's explore. Oh, a motorcycle. that garage. Pots and pans, you need pots and pans? Nope. Uh, oh, jeez. I don't have street etiquette. Okay, I bought some 50 bucks, baby. Oh, jeez. So, okay, they are in that big warehouse. A big wig. It's locked up tight. Sure. Five hundred? Sure, baby. Two nine two something. Okay. Two nine two something. Looking for some info. Yeah, what's what's the story about this place? Hmm. All you do in Shot Ness is get your arse beat by gangs, so you decide to join one. So which gang are you in, buddy? Great. Two, nine, two, something. That's it. Yeah, okay, I agree. Let's brute force this. Two nine two nine. Two nine two eight. Two nine two seven. Two nine two six. Two nine two five. Two nine two four. We did it. Okay, we're 
in combat. So this guy, he is the engineer? Whoa, what the hell is this guy wearing? I wanna know what this, this, is he wearing like a skeleton mask with green eyes? I don't know. Rambok, Ganger, Conjurer, sure. Getting cover. And uh, get out our steel link strong. Um, yeah, I can go here. Probably won't hit anything, right? Nice. Oh, we are like all clustered up where a grenade could wreck us. Big wave dodge. Okay, how about this drone? Really? Yes, yes. Your friend is nothing more than a puddle now. where they come out, okay. No. Thank goodness we missed. Okay. How do you miss when you're literally right behind me? There we go. Why'd you attack the furthest person? A sundowner, take him out. Turn yourself off. Other drone, you. Turn yourself off. And here's the only way we can go. So let's just uh, hang out over here. Huh. 
How long do I have minus one AP? Jeez. Okay, not anymore. Come, come to me, baby. What an idiot. Half dragon's breath. Get kneecap. Buddies. damage. Lol. Reload. Take her out. Oh, that didn't take her out. One dude out there, at least one dude out there that we can see. And the engineer must be through there. Okay. I'll have to turn these buddies off. Now we get in position somewhere in this room uh, in the next five years.
Jack. You hide next to the leaves. Let's turn on our drones. Hello. Have you heard the good news about fire? next to Iger, in case he has grenades. Probably heal. Twenty hit points. How much am I missing? Okay, I'm missing twenty-three. So close to him. And then use that thing that I have. Okay. Unfortunately, Jack is not the fastest person. Maybe Iger needs to kneecap him.
Okay. Tiger, you need to go up to. Yeah, you need to go right up to this guy. You need to soak a blast, please. Please don't shoot me. Oh my god, that was close. Oh my god, why are they all the way over? Why weren't they in follow mode? Dragon's breath. Not enough him. Oh, really? I missed. Oh, garbage. he gave me really made this trivial. Let me drag this guy back to a warehouse. We're gonna find out what he knows. The engineer lies, splayed out on the ground, his body trembling violently. Iger shoves a bottle up his nose and what? Okay, what did you just give him? An aerosol BZD to help treat the seizures. Bannock was kind enough to include it in his goodie bag. It won't last long, but it should give Yuli here enough muscular control to answer a few questions. Fuck you, troll! See, look at that, he's already talking. Jeez. I don't want to... I don't want to torture him. Are you ready to chat? I know as a troll bitch we have history, but you, you're a stranger to me. Are you sure that you have the stomach for this stranger? Not many do. Um... Hey, give us what we want, this will be a lot easier, man. I've got nothing for you, Shadow Rudder. The sooner you learn that, the better off we'll be. Oh, Yuli, you're in no position to make demands. Um... This feels bad. I don't want to do this. Is this really what we're going to do?
You're helpless, a fucking cripple. But if you answer our questions, things will go easier for you. So tell us, whose payroll are you on? Tell us, who sent you to Shot and Nest? All right, you want to know so badly, I'll tell you. Tamanus sent me here. They want to use Shot and Nest as a base of operations in Berlin. My point of contact is a ghoul named Beetle. There, you've got your intel. Now set me free or kill me. Yuli, Yuli, Yuli. You wouldn't roll over an employer this easily. Your rep tells me that much. Hmm. Uh, I'll trust Iger. <coughs> you wanted a name, I gave you a name. Want more, I can give you those too. I can name you a hundred clients who'd love a piece of shot in this. How do you intend to determine who really sent me? Uh... Yeah, I don't, I don't actually have any ideas, but... Yeah, help us out. If you're already dead, well, I care about being a snitch. I want to give your she troll the satisfaction. She wants it, that's why she won't get it. If you don't start telling me what I want to hear in the next 30 seconds, it's gonna get messy. Uh, yeah, hold up, maybe. I don't, I don't want to... I don't want to torture him. You know, Iger, I'd like to tell you a story. We share so much history, you and I. This, this is a funny story. It's a story about your time in the KSK. A story about futility. I can tell you about the many lives you've touched and how the syndicates touched them again afterwards. Would you like that? Jack, do me a favor. Sweep the building for intel. Anything we might miss on the way in. I don't want to leave them alone. Yeah, I'm gonna trust you to keep your cool, Iger. Don't fuck this. Don't worry about me, fearless leader. I've done this before. There's one thing this asshole has said that holds water. We aren't gonna solve this on his word alone. <sighs> yeah. Okay, I'll look for evidence. Yeah, no torture, baby. Oh, a corpse. The broken body of a human man lies on the floor. His face is a mess of fresh cuts and congealing blood, and his head is oddly deformed. Despite his wounds, his mouth is twisted into a macabre smile. 
Judging by the shape of the Ganger's head, you'd guess that his skull has been fractured in at least three places. The center of his forehead is particularly gruesome. It looks soft, as though the skin were stretched like a tent between shards of broken bone. Looking up, you can see a great smear of gore on the door of this room that you found him in. The implications are clear. This man bashed his own head in trying to get out, and he did it with a smile on his face. His hands are badly broken, too. You've seen these sorts of injuries after bare-knuckle fistfights, but never anything this severe. This man punched something hard and went on punching until his hands were reduced to useless slabs of meat. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Empty chemicals. A courier drone. It's melted. Oh, what about this other one? The generic courier drone has been snapped together out of prefab parts from a dozen different manufacturers. It's a cheap, utilitarian thing, remarkable only in that it's so incredibly plain. A half-bright teenager could cobble together something like this in an afternoon. The drone sits in a charging cradle, its turbofan unpowered. A cheerful green light blinks on its front panel to remind you that it's still active. You can see the silhouette of something under the flimsy plastic dome of the drone's cargo compartment. Whatever this thing was here to deliver, it's still carrying it. Pop it open! You'd press the catch on the container's plastic lid. Rather than swinging open, the lid slides back to reveal a touchpad. It looks as though this thing is password locked. So let's look at the drone more closely. There's a set of electrical contact plates lining the lip of the drone's cargo compartment. It's a fair bet this thing is outfitted with an anti-tampering system of some kind. Rig it. Patching to the drone's OS via your remote control rig is simple enough. Oh. Attempt to push my way past safeguards. Fuck it. Yes. Open the lid. Homemade SimSense chip. Take it. <laughs> As you step away from the drone, the hissing sound grows into a roar. Bright white sparks spit out from the drone's melting chassis to streak across the room. You've seen this kind of reaction before. Thermite. Whoever built this drone must have wired it with a self-destruct device. Within seconds, all that's left of the little drone is a molten wreck on the charging cradle. Foul-spelling smoke pours from the remains. You steal another glance at the chip you recovered and turn away. What the fuck are you doing? Find anything? Uh, yeah, what the hell, Iger? <sighs> yeah, stand the fuck down, Iger. So I found a body in the other room. From the looks of him, he tried to beat down a steel reinforced door with his head. There are a pair of courier drones in the other room. No markings. They looked custom built. One of them had been slagged, but the other had this chip in its storage compartment. Yeah, that 
that did. Interesting. This means something to you, Yuli? No identifying markings? I've seen BTLs in my time. Uh, uh, well, I've seen enough BTLs in my time to know one when I see it. But this is different. It's been modified. Um. Go ahead, slot it, bitch. It will take you on the ride of your life. He isn't worth the effort. Yeah, you're right. Besides, I think that we're getting closer. Look at his temple. See the sweat beating up? I'd say Yuli's developed himself a habit. You don't know what you're holding, Slag. You don't deserve to touch that chip. I think you're right, Iker. Fuck you. Hmm. Thing is, I know our friend's rep, and I'm telling you, he's much too careful to get himself addicted to Sims. If these things have him hooked this badly, they must be even more addictive than standard BTLs. Yeah, that's scary. You're telling me the last thing we need is more Sim junkies on our streets? You got anything to add to that, Yuli? You have no idea how wrong you are about all of this. If I could move my arms, I'd take that chip from you and show you what it does. Yeah, I'm sure you would. Good find, Jack. We've struck a nerve. Any other thoughts? Yeah. I think I might know where the other chip went. You know that body in the other room? Yeah, I'm on and stop torturing him. Search for chip. Got it. Take it. <coughs> Find what you're looking for. Yep. I've heard of things like this before. Single-use sims, designed to self-destruct after they're slotted. Keeps the customers from reusing the same BTL over and over. I'd say you found our missing chip. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know who would willingly slot something like this. It drove him to kill himself, and from the looks of the body, he enjoyed it. You don't know a damn thing. Yeah, educate us. What? This chip doesn't drive you insane, it opens your eyes. Slot one and you become a god. I too was a skeptic, and then the wolf got me, and the raven opened my eyes, and now at last I can see. Give me the chip, it was promised to me, I need it. <coughs> Winter night. Winter night. Okay. Never heard of him. Of course you haven't, bitch. If you had, you'd already be dead. They don't leave loose ends. They have money, she throw. Money and influence. Enough to put the syndicate to shame. Even I cannot say how much, but I do know what I've seen is just the tip of the spear. Alright, what do they want with shot and mask? <laughs> they do not tell me these things. All I know is that they want to store things here. Crates, boxes, shipped from all over. No cargo inspections, no traces to them. What, what are they shipping in? Weapons, drugs, more of these BTLs? You think I asked them? It's not my place to know. 
All that I know is that I was promised that. Give me the chip you promised. Oh, uh, Hiker, please do not fucking do this. Yeah, just fucking let him slot it and kill himself. <clears throat> Custom rifle. Sweet! <clears throat> Yeah. Let's take, make this deal. Over there in the corner, there's a duffel bag under the floor plate. Now give it to me. Sweet. <coughs> oh, did she... Did she break the chip with her knife? Is that what she fucking did? What have you done? Why don't I feel anything? Well, sorry about that, Yuli. I guess the cyberware deactivator shut down your chip jack, too. Somewhere in the back of that addled skull, I'm sure you probably already knew that. Ah, oh, well, that sucks for him. I'm going to kill you. Do you hear me? I'll rip out your spine. Yeah, good luck. Oh. Something's wrong. Look at his hands. <coughs> oh, how long was this cyber where the actor is supposed to last? What? His chest evaporates in a spray of light. Excuse me? Oh, there. Step back, Jack. Way back. Well, then. Jesus. <clears throat> well, sweet. Get that rifle. Astaire Aug CSL multi weapon system. Should we bite off that much? Yeah, yeah, that's true. I don't think we can. <coughs> We're already taking on a big, big freaking dragon. A bad dragon. The U-Bond whisks you back towards the KP. Iger stands by your side. The image of the engineer's body disintegrating in flame replays itself over and over in your mind. The bright flash, the shower of sparks, the overpowering stench of sizzling meat. A blue-green afterimage hangs suspended in the center of your field of vision, 
and it refuses to be blinked away. From what Iger told you, the engineer was a menace, an international criminal at the top of his game. As you watched, he was consumed from within by a device that marked him as disposable. The rattle of your U-Bahn car coming to a halt shakes you from your reverie. You're home. Talk to Iger first, see if she has any feeling. Oh, and we'll check on Blitz. Did you do that thing you're doing? I guess not. Alright. What is this? Wait, what? Interact. It's a box. The Lodge thanks you for your dutiful service. Black Ops Command. Prototype combat suit. Plus one to all attributes. Let's do it. <coughs> this is garbage. So send it through stash. But that is rad. You know, we talked about what happened with the engineer. Yeah, I'm ready to go over if you are. <coughs> so the engineer was working for a secret society. I wasn't expecting that. Well, neither was I. Part of me is still having trouble believing it. But it's true. Yuli wasn't lying. I could see it in his eyes. Yeah, I haven't had any chance to play with that rifle. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece of engineering. Shoots straight, good stopping power, holds a big magazine. Really nice gun. Now you mentioned a bunch of aftermarket mods. Have you figured out what they do? Well, just one. It can tag a chambered round with an RF transmitter. After the round hits the target, the transmitter pings on a designated channel, broadcasting the target's exact location to anyone listening in. In layman's terms, this thing uh, can mark a target. There's a cyberware that does the same thing, and Deckers do it all the time. This is the first time I've seen this kind of functionality on a rifle. Sweet. Um, hmm. <coughs> yeah, you can have suck at Sniper, though. I think you should have. Have been able to do any digging on winter night? Not really. There just isn't reliable information out there. Whoever these guys are, they're very good at information control. None of my contacts would find anything but rumor and conjecture. And uh, most of that's even too crazy to consider. How crazy. Completely insane. Stories about magical nukes, the end of the world, Fenris shamans, Ragnarok, that kind of thing. Like I said, nuts. Maybe they're running a disinformation campaign. There are a lot of crazy things going on in this world, that's true. Maybe that doesn't mean they're not real. We'll see, we'll see. Spill the beans, girl. You really want to know what he told me? Alright, fine, I'll tell you. He told me about a bunch of Polish towns my unit swept for syndicate activity. He told me how the mob poured right back in after we left and what they did to the people who'd accepted our help. 
He told me about the beatings, the rapes, the killing rooms, the torture, and worse. He relished in describing it, the relentless, hideous barbarism of it all, all meant to teach some sort of lesson. Uh. Some truth that's not invalidated, I think. Good job, I agree. the rigor. Greetings. Is there something I can do for you? Oh yeah, we did send Corrin over. <coughs> ah yes, Corrin of the Rabin Geister. Yes, in fact, I received a message from this man just a short while ago. If this is your wish, I'll work with Samuel to coordinate a shipment of surplus rations to Gasundbrunen. I did hear about Ganari's missing shipments, by the way. If we were to aid Corrin, then I trust that our misunderstandings with the Robin Geister have been resolved. Yeah, stick together. Small keys, stick together. A wise move, Jack. I think Monica would be proud. Very well, I shall, I shall make the arrangements. I'm glad you were able to retrieve Ganari's shipments without needless violence. Good work. Yeah, I need your password. <coughs> yes, very good. Excellent, in fact. This has been a long time coming, Jack. You're telling me. All right, Jack, before you make this transfer, there are a few things you should know. Firstly, this is a one-way operation. Once the funds have been transferred to the cred stick, the only person who will be able to access them is Alice. As far as the team is concerned, the money will simply disappear. Uh, yeah, that's not like we're going to do anything else with it. Secondly, once you make your way to the rabbit hole with the funds, it's go time. I trust you understand what I mean by that. <coughs> yeah, clarify. What I mean is that retrieving Alice's information will be your only priority. No more distractions, no more side work. I will busy myself canceling your remaining jobs and smoothing any ruffled feathers. Makes sense. Uh, just that you need to be sure before committing to this. Time is important. A great dragon wants us dead, and that's not a thing to take lightly. But you shouldn't return to the rabbit hole until you're prepared to act. If 
you have any doubts, then I'd urge you to wait. Yeah. Volklingen. Sweet. <clears throat> All right, let's go down the rabbit hole. from our stash. Okay, we don't need this thing. We do need this thing. Uh, why do we have a grenade? Get the hell out of here. Cool. Well, that's good to me. get our money from uh yeah claim payment nice nice walking in the funds disappear from your account moments later a message pops up on screen transfer complete <coughs> The trigger has been pulled. The rabbit hole awaits. Cool, let's go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wait, where, uh, where do I go? Take the U-Bahn to me now, so okay. Can I buy an S-Class drone? Please give me an S-Class drone. Tiny cred stick feels heavy in your pocket, fat with the weight of hard-won million. The U-Bahn station swallows you up and sends you hurtling down the rabbit hole, towards Alice, towards the information you've bled for. The train pulls to a stop and the doors hiss open to the dark old platform. With luck, answers lie ahead. Credstick port at the machine greedily accepts your payment. You watch as the black plastic of the Credstick's case disappears into the console. Moments later, the familiar sight of Alice's office winks onto the screen. Something is wrong here. You can see it in Alice's face. Her eyes are open a little too wide, her smile just a little too forced. It's a look you've seen before, all too often. Underneath her polished exterior, Alice, the Alice, is terrified. Uh, Alice, let's go... Hold a moment. I'm transferring your payment now. Yes, everything seems to be in order. Good. Um... 
What's going on, Alice? <clears throat> Your information. As the briefcase grows larger on the screen, you can hear the whine of motors spinning up in the curtain. What? A generic brand optical chip slides out of the payment port. Your answers are on the chip. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to run. What are you running from, Alice? You'll find out. And Jack the Rigger, a free piece of advice. You should drop your search for Vauclair. Drop it now, and run far, far away. If you don't, you're going to get yourself killed. And stay out of the Matrix, Jack. It isn't safe. Interesting. Okay, let's go back home and take a look at this. As you settle in for your trip back to the KB, you can feel the rest of the world compartmentalize and fall away. No more distractions, just you, the train, and the optical chip. It sits in your pocket like a hot stone, impossible to ignore. The train ramps up to speed, filling the air with a monotonous electric whir. The sound is soft and low and urgent, like the droning wings of an enormous insect. It'd be soothing if your mind weren't occupied with other matters. All at once, the monotony is broken. Your PDA is buzzing. A quick glance at the screen tells you you're receiving a call and that Paul Ansel's on the other end. You hit the receive button on your PDA. One look at the grainy image that blossoms to life on the screen is enough to tell you that something has gone terribly wrong. The strangled sounds of panicked breathing punch through your PDA's tiny speakers. In the image window, you can see the outlines of figures silhouetted against the backdrop of Ansel's shop. The view rotates, bringing them toward the center of the frame. <clears throat> the image sharpens. In the center of the screen stands an enormous orc in battle armor, a hand cannon leveled at something just out of frame. His face is a shiny mat of grafted tissue, his smile like something out of a nightmare. You watch, powerless, as the orc's grin widens. The frantic breaths that you hear coming from off-screen increase in frequency. Oh. Audrin, please, tell me what this is all about. What are the Firewind's plans? You're going to kill me anyway. Don't send me to the grave without... <coughs> Your stomach drops as the gun bucks and roars in the orc's hand. Your view on the PDA pitches wildly and then comes to a sudden stop with a violent cracking sound. A burst of static floods the screen. Moments later, a dark shape falls into view with equivalent force. You hear the unmistakable sound of bone crunching against hardwood. The camera auto-adjusts and the dark shape swims into focus. You're staring into and through the dripping, cavernous ruin of what was once a human head. The remnants of the face that remains are enough to confirm what your gut already knows. The body on the screen is that of Paul Ansel. From out of frame, far away, you can hear another voice, a woman young from the sound of it with a military cadence. What now, sir? <clears throat> now we press our advantage, jam their comms, Ortega. Alright, remember people, Ansel was the brains of the operation, but the rest will put up a lot more fight. Flush them out and take them down, one by one. Sir, look at Amsel's wrist, the PDA. I think it's recording. God fucking damn it. Your vision swims and the screen of your PDA seems to fade away. 
The impact of what you've witnessed hammers you in the gut over and over again. Amsla is dead. The KB is under attack, and it's entirely possible an ambush party is already waiting to meet you at the U-Bahn platform. Whatever your attackers have planned, you won't be able to do much about it from here. The train speeding toward the KB station. No more stops between you and the enemy. Nothing to do but prepare yourself and wait. Sick. Let's do this. Oh, Iger's here. Hell yeah. About time you showed up. The light plays off Iger's face like a streetlight on rain-slick asphalt. Her face, neck, and chest are sheeted in slick, dark liquid. Blood. I hope this isn't Chris's blood. Uh, Iger, you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. You only nicked my thigh. All <sighs> oh, this blood up here, it's not mine. Nice. Well, you know what they say. Any weapon at your disposal. Did you meet up with Alice? Do you have the information? Yeah, I got it. An optical chip. I'll have to use my commission computer to open it. Whoever's on that chip, these bastards don't want us to read it. All the more reason to exactly that. After we put the rest of them in the ground, that is. Uh, hey, they killed Paul. Yeah. Yeah, I know. He had us all patched in on that. We all saw what happened. I figured they'd try to ambush you at the platform. Ventilate the train, take you out, cut off a potential escape route. It's what I would do. So I hightailed it out of here and set an ambush of my own. Save it. I'm here to protect that optical chip. That thing cost us 50 grand after all. Anyway, enough talk. We've got a job to do. There are an unknown number of hostiles topside. They're well equipped, decently trained, and hell bent on killing us. Last I heard, Gloria was on the north end of town. Dietrich was out getting coffee when all hell broke loose. Let's go get him. Where's Blitz? Glorious to the north, let's get glory first. Oh, and we finally have another action point. Thank goodness. Maybe now, after this, I'll be able to buy S class drones. like that we kind of have a weapon for every range. Um, I should probably get Iger in cover though. Yeah, go here. And then snip. 94. Do it. That was good damage. Yeah, just take it. Uh, I don't feel like I have a whole lot of good cover, I guess, right here. It's so bad with these. Okay, at least that did some good work. 
good puffer. Huh. I need another inventory slot so I can actually have a weapon. That or I need a third drone. Something ahead of you lets out a low, rumbling growl from the shadows, a primordial sound that echoes down the snowy streets. It steps into the light. It's Dante. Even from this distance, you can feel the heat radiating from the enormous dog's body. He locks eyes with you, and you can see fire burning within them. He takes a step towards you, hackles raised. Oh, uh, forgot to mention, fearless leader, your, uh, your dog's acting a little funny. How long's he been like this? Beats me, I caught sight of him on the way down to the U-Bond platform. He looked normal enough, then one of these big bastards took a shot at him and winged him. Big mistake. Dante got mad, real mad. He started shaking and twitching, and I saw the fire in his eyes. He was on the guy before I could blink. A few seconds later, the shooter was a red smear on the sidewalk, and Dante, we well, looked like this. Hmm. It's not gonna attack us, right? Yeah, it'll work. He's a good. He's a good buddy. Slowly, the wind begins to shift, and he sniffs the air, looking from you to Iger, then back to you. Acknowledgement washes across his face and his expression softens. His ears stand back up and you could swear you see him smile. Dante takes his place by your side. Well, whatever he is, I'm glad he's on our team. Let's find the others. Good pupper. Okay. So Glory was somewhere on the north side of town. I guess over here. Oh, we're being flanked. <coughs> Stay back here and use the drones to hold off uh, this dude who's sneaking up on us. Sniffy Sniffy do. Conjurer Mercenary. Let's go for the Conjurer. Nice. Good going, Iger. In fact, Iger should maybe just move even further away. Dante, can you take care of this dude? We can petrify someone. Oh, that sounds rad. <coughs> Look at Dante, you soloed this dude. 
far enough. Sorry, Glory. Let's just hang out in the open. I guess this guy's the only one left now. That was easy. Whoa! That was a lot of attacks. And they all missed. Yeah. 
Coming, dude. And you get behind this rock. I right, hear what sort of justice can you deliver this mercenary? really injured, that's pretty nice. See that dude. And you 
too, because I'll probably just kill him now, right? Why? Why do you have two different electro cores? I guess you can just throw a shirt. Ninja Throne Star. Glad to see you made it here alive. Listen, boss, we've got problems. I saw a group of these jackasses peel off a few minutes ago. They made a beeline for the sewers. They're carrying bombs, Jack. Can't say what yields, but they look big. Unless you fancy living in a crater, I'd suggest we hightail it down there. Yeah, where's Blitz? He took off with Malit. Said some about jamming the attackers' comms. Don't worry about them. We gotta deal with those bombs. Team, descend into the sewers, footsteps echoing off of the damp stone walls. You barely notice the smell. There's no time to waste. Audrin's team of mercenaries is down here somewhere, racing to plant their explosive charges beneath the Kiaz. The fate of the cruise bar, uh, the cruise bazaar, the KB, is in your hands. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, so I already using my prescience know where all the bombs are. Sweet. Eleven rounds until the bombs explode. Well, okay, should we split up? We have sewer friends. Okay, that's very nice to know. We'll help. We have to help them out. I was going to defuse it and run, but we can't let our ghoul friends um, take take the hit for the team. Thank you. 
Start kicking ass. Glory, defuse that. this room down here. Oh, that sucks. At least he got one of his own team members. Super helpful. Let's fray his armor. Nice. You have no armor now, sir. Doggo, keep eating this Good job. up really. I think the 
Ghoul probably has that guy killed down there, so Gloria should help. Okay. Maybe Gloria should help up here. We can't just send him in by himself, so he has to at least wait a little bit for some other reinforcements. Sundowner again. Okay, and it will go in with Diedrich and the big dog. You can come out just a little bit, just enough to cast haste on Glory. Okay, next round, uh, you guys all bust through that door, please. Grenade. That's all we'll, we'll need to take out both those. No? Uh. Help the tool. Go back for repairs. Uh, drone, open the store, please, so Glory doesn't have to. Glory, can you defuse that bomb? Not quite. Let's 
that dude. Or we can't freeze that. Nah. Sorry, Glory, you're gonna take a lot of hits, I think. focus down that guy. So maybe Glory will just kill that conqueror. Uh, the Sundowner will press the button. Okay. Oh, nice. We do have a little helper on this side. Find more of these. Yo. Tiger won't make it up here in time. Dead contrary. Sun Tanner, confuse this bomb. Should have made one move first before doing that. We've got a whole movement range further. Come on. Well, if Iger can stay in the door, maybe she can get like a snippy snip shot. Let's 
dwellers. that orc guy is going to be waiting for us up at the um, safe house. <sighs> Glad we uh, had cool friends. You emerge from the foulness of the sewers, only to be met with the equally dark stench of cordite and death. Although you've saved the Kiaz, it's far from unharmed. Residents wander the streets dazed, holding their wounds, tending to others, observing the damage. The look in their eyes tells the story. Their illusion of safety has been shattered. You enter Paul Amsel's trade emporium, already knowing what you'll find there. The knowledge doesn't make the discovery any easier. Once again, the team gathers around Paul Amsel, but tonight he has no more missions to offer and no advice to give. His body lies motionless on the hardwood, cooling in night air. The ruin of his face has been hidden under a burlap tarp. For several minutes, nobody speaks, and then finally Dietrich steps forward. I think we should say something about Paul. Yeah, I'll go. Paul Amsel was an important member of his team, and he supported us well. He said that he he said what he was going to do, and he did. That's rare. That's worthy of respect. Thanks, Paul, for everything. I I was out of position when they came for you. I couldn't save you. I'm sorry. I appreciate what Amsel did for us. It's another loss, one that this team can't afford. Yeah, let's support each other. We'll get through this, man. Yeah, that's right. There's more to this than a mercenary's paycheck. There has to be. Goodbye, Paul. <laughs> Whatever. Something in German. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Gingerly, Blitz. That's where, where's Blitz? Oh, he's, he is here. His hair is must, and there's a fresh bullet hole in his jacket. He smells like smoke and blood and stale sweat. And his hands tremble as he takes them out of his pocket. Well, uh, I didn't know Paul as well as the rest of you, but, you know, he seemed like a good guy. And I, didn't, I didn't want to say this happened at any rate. You okay, Blitz? You look like you and Malit saw some action back there. Yeah, yeah, I'll live. As if, in turn, Dante lowers his head sadly, lets out a heavy sigh and closes his eyes. Can't leave Paul's body there. I'll take care of it after we've watched the chip. Don't worry, I know what to do. Be respectful, but be quick. After all, it's only a shell. Paul is with Monica now. Well, we're all gonna be with Monica soon if we don't do something. The fire wing came after us once, she'll do it again. Yeah, there's more than us. We're all in danger. No, I'm not being fucking dramatic. I don't think he is, Iger. I really don't. 
Come on, everyone. Let's get a look at that optical chip. I want to see what we're dealing with. Yeah, I mean, she was going to blow up uh, a whole, like, little city-state. Come on. Oh, what is this? Oh, that's where we, yeah, duh. For some reason, I just haven't actually noticed that um, in forever. That's how we got here. I have to buy two more um, uh, rope drone repair kits. get one more um, carrying slot. Additional weapon slot, okay. Six points into ranged combat. Because I don't think I should be melee. Although I do already have a plus one. I could get with just five points. Okay, we have six points left after this. I really need. Oh, it's just gonna be. I don't know if we'll have enough points to get it if I put. Um, if I put those points in an extra slot. An extra slot though could mean an extra drone. You know what? An extra drone is, I think, worth it. Because who knows if we'll even ever have enough karma to, to get this. So plus 2 AP for uh, both my drones would be great, but having like 3 drones? Hmm, that sounds way better. Yeah, we'll have to pick up another. Yes. Yeah, I don't have anything to pick. So yeah, let's just read the contents. You slot the optical chip into the computer's waiting chip jack. On the screen, Alice's office blossoms into view. A half second later, a real-time simulation of Alex appears, seated behind her mahogany desk. Something about it reminds you of a figure from a wax museum, lifelike, but dead inside. It greets you with a facsimile of Alice's joyless smile. Customer name, Jack the Rigger. Account number, 1012579. Greetings, valued customer. I am an offline simulacrum of the Alice persona. I have been included on this trip to answer any questions you might have about your information purchase. Whoa, that's a nifty piece of tech. Not now, Blitz. If you are ready per to proceed, I will present Alice's findings. You may interrupt this presentation at any point by saying, Alice, I have a question. We're ready. Very well, commencing presentation. All right, Jack the Rigger, I've got good news for you, and I've got bad news. Let's start with the good news. 
I found Vauclair, and he's alive. Thank God. The trail to your missing doctor was a long and slippery one. The fee that you paid me barely covered my cost for the job. I sent a team into the socks on a fact-finding mission. I bribed government officials. I greased the palms of wage slaves at megacorps all across Europe. Each step I took eliminated possibilities, drew me a little bit closer, and finally I found the place where Vauclair is being held. But this is where you'll find him. He's being held captive at a remote estate called the Harfeld Manor. You've got to be kidding me. He was there the whole time? Uh, okay, nobody tell me. I get it. There's something else I missed. Alice, I have a question. You have a question. Alright, please make your inquiry now. Yeah, what evidence? One of my assets at Transys Neuronet provided me with a video feed dated 2053-1010. The feed was taken by a corporate surveillance drone. Playback commencing. The screen is filled with a grainy black and white video feed. You recognize the Harfeld Manor, photographed from high above. The camera pushes in and the image sharpens. Through a barred, ground-level window, you can see the shape of a stooped, emaciated figure. His body shows clear signs of neglect. The figure is unmistakable, it's Vauclair, twenty years older and worse for wear. His skin hangs loose on his bones and his cheeks are hollow. There's a distinctly grey pallor to his skin. Well that's Vau Vauclair alright, what's left of him anyway. It doesn't look like they've been feeding him much, poor bastard. Another figure steps into frame behind Vauclair, an orc. He turns his head slightly and his skin grafts catch the light. Vauclair slowly turns to face Audrin, and the video feed cuts out. Do you have another question? What else did you turn up? Seismological data and thermal imaging confirm the existence of a large hollow chamber under the estate. It is my suspicion that Dr. Vauclair is being held somewhere within this substructure. If Firewings kept Vauclair trapped there for almost 20 years, she's got to have a reason for it. It takes effort and resources to lock a man away for that amount of time. So what's her end game in all this? Why not just kill him and be done with it? Is she inside of him? Has she, like... Because she's just a, a spirit, right? Like, her spirit is separated from her body. So, like, is her spirit maybe inhabiting Vauclair? Is, is he actually the one who was leading that cult out in the socks and is, is back here now because he's, he's really been like possessed by her. <sighs> Malice, revenge, who knows? Remember, this was the man who shot her down. If he sent her crashing into a radioactive wasteland, uh, he sent her crashing into a radioactive wasteland. If somebody did that to me, I'd want to hurt him too. And I'd make it last. I think it goes deeper than that. According to Winter's DVD, Vauclair designed the experimental weapon that shot her down, and that weapon split her body from her essence. If I had to guess, I'd say she's trying to make him fix whatever he did to her. That's what makes sense to me. Do you have another question? No. Very well, feel free to interrupt again with any future inquiries. Vauclair's at Harfield. We've got problems. The last time we broke into that place, they took Monica out. It was a miracle that any of you got out alive. Yeah, but now we know what's down there. This time we'll be prepared. We can handle this. No, it'll be even worse this time. The first time we went in, we had the element of surprise on our side. But now, they'll be expecting us. They're hunting us, remember? Their security team's gonna be waiting for us. That Aldrin bastard's gonna be waiting for us. And even if we make it past them, we're gonna have to deal with the dragon in the basement. But what else can we do? Cut and run? Last time I checked, that wasn't an option either. Even if it were, I wouldn't take it. I'm not running from this. And after what they did here tonight. 
we do need an edge. And now, Jack, on to the bad news. You know where Vauclair is, but rescuing him will not be possible. Uh, Alice, I, I have a question. Alice, I have a question. Why the hell not? In the course of my investigation, I encountered something terrifying in the Matrix. It was fast, cunning, and very definitely intelligent. I'm convinced that I only escaped because it let me go. It could have killed me in a heartbeat if it wanted to. This thing that I met is protecting the Harfeld Manor, and it's going after anyone who gets too close to what's happening there. Alice, what did you see in there? What is going after these people? By way of explanation, I would like to read the following document. What you're looking at is an archived forum discussion from the early days of the Shadowland BBS. Oh, she uh, it isn't kidding, Chief. This discussion stayed back to 2036. That's ancient history in the Deccan community. It probably isn't even correct to call these guys Deckers. Hackers would be the more appropriate term. When you finish reading it over, say, Alice, I'm done, and we can continue. Okay. This K team, they got crisped, a whole lab's worth of researchers. Okay. Power spike got right through their data jacks, like a bolt of lightning to the brain. Clean up operation. A secret project. Project Apex. Okay, interesting. What's CDT one thousand? Waits for you to come to it. Apex wouldn't be okay. Fair enough. And then it would take over the world. There's no official records of the Seder Krupp database to support the existence of the Apex project, but the thing I encountered was Apex. Of that, I am certain. Just as I am certain that Apex was responsible for the deaths of Monica Schaefer, Green Winters, Clockwork, Peregrine, and a score of other Deckers over the last 16 years. Hold up, Alice, I have a question. I thought they said Lofweir killed Apex. They speculated as much, yes, but they were wrong. I do believe the Seder Krupp was developing Apex as a tool for Matrix warfare. I'm also convinced that the IT personal personnel who were killed were the Apex development team. But I don't think that Lofweir was responsible for their deaths. Okay, so Apex escaped. That would be my guess, yes. In the turmoil surrounding Lofweir's buyout of Seder Krupp, a number of projects went missing. I believe the Apex was appropriated by a member of Firewing's organization at this point. It was then unleashed on its own development team to silence them. Since then, it's provided information control for the Firewing. Okay. A pet AI. So there's your bad news, Jack. Vauclair's being held at the Harfeld Manor, but knowing that does you no good, because you can't approach the place. I doubt you could open the door without Apex frying you. We did last time. They were trying to protect their secret, like Audrin said. 
If we hadn't gone down in the basement, they'd have let us go. Apex didn't react to us until Monica attempted to force the door to the basement. And now the cat's out of the bag, they have no reason not to pull out the big guns on sight. You're right, we can't go back while Apex is in place. Great, so... Hmm. Yeah, we found a way to kill Apex. The AI, the AI has a kill switch, but Alice deemed any additional contact with Apex to be an unjustifiable risk. Attempting to reach the kill switch would be inadvisable. Um, yeah, tell us about it. Thanks to my close encounter with the AI, I was able to run a trace on it. Through this trace, I discovered the physical address of a backdoor access point for Apex's programming, an old Seder Group research lab long since abandoned and fallen into disrepair. The facility is now hotly contested gang territory. I've also determined that a kill switch for the AI exists somewhere in the basement of this facility. I'll provide you with a physical address. I don't like the smell of this, Chief. I said Apex let Alice escape. Alice, why would a Matrix Warfare eye allow you to run a trace on it? I'm afraid the answer to that question falls outside the scope of my written parameters. You have now reached the end of this presentation. I've been encoded with a final message from Alice to Jack the Rigger. Playback commencing. Jack the Rigger, if you don't... If you didn't listen to me before, listen to me now. Drop this. Stop going after Vauclair. Get out of Berlin. And stay out of the Matrix. I'm telling you this for your own good. That's all I have to say. I'm following my own advice. I'm out. Don't try to contact me again. Great. So the dragon has a killer AI in charge of security. I can't say I'm surprised. But then, nothing surprises me anymore. We know what killed Monica, we have a name for it, and we know how to kill it. It's good enough for me. Um, yeah, we shut down Apex. <sighs> yeah, I don't want any more casualties. So say this is all crazy talk, Chief. Taking on an AI isn't just a bad idea. It's suicide. So my vote is to cut and run. But if you're really doing this, you want the best deck you can find along for the ride. I guess that nominates me. Woo. Alice said the kill switch is located in some old SK facility. Assuming the site was shut down some night after the Apex project disappeared, it could have stood empty for years, maybe even decades. She also said the building was in gang territory now. I wonder if it'll be anything like Das Kessel House was. God, I hope not. There's only one way to find out. Let's get prepped. This thing isn't going to kill itself. <sighs> I can't believe I'm saying this, but you better bring me along. You try going up against the eye without a Nova Hot Decker at your side, you're probably going to regret it. AI to take out after all. Jack, do me a favor. Keep your eyes open on this one. We're walking in the unknown. Makes me a little uneasy. Let's get to work. Sweet. Let's pet the pupper, pet the pupper. Hello, pupper. Let's 
So, Jack, Dante was very helpful out there, but I'm a bit concerned about his. A village of petrified people who doesn't like and rend their flesh with tooth and claw. Yeah. He's not a normal dog, not by a long shot. Is he possessed? I assume we've checked his aura and discovered he's part of Hellhound. Monica trained him for months to be combat ready. We had a hellhound in the house and Monica didn't tell us for months. Jack the Rigger has him under control. Dante performed well in the field, followed commands flawlessly. I have no concerns. Welcome to team. Good pupper. Um, let's see if we can get a Frickin' S-Class Drone. That is what I need. Preferably three of them. Oh yeah, I need some tech, baby. Yes. Maybe, maybe we keep the sundowner. Yeah, I need a few of these. Yeah, keep the sundowner. Oh wait, I can't have um three drones? That changes everything. Darn it. ranged combat at. Oh, it's the upgrade my close combat instead of... Fuck. Oh, well, but I don't actually want a grenade launcher. Goodbye, Sundowner. Goodbye, Steel Lynx. You served me well. You know what, actually? If we use this jumpsuit again, we'll have less armor, but when we have 10 drone combat, sounds pretty good. Jazz and Cram. Uh, I don't really think basic anything is going to be helpful. Yeah. Sweet. I'll go to my stash and equip that, I guess. Okay. 
Oh, you know what? I'm going to actually call it, call it here. I will go get lunch. Oh yeah, thank you for um, hanging out with me. And um, yeah, next week, uh, Saturday, I will play more of this. Maybe, maybe we'll even finish it. I don't know how close we are. Um, on Thursday, I'm going to be playing more Alice, uh, American McGee's Alice. And I don't know what I'm going to do on Tuesday. So, but I'll stream something on Tuesday. Uh, so yeah, later. Peace out. Thanks for watching.